Greetings, fight fans! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, I'm a child of the 90s, if I'm honest. My teenage years spanned from 1990 to 2000. And in 1992, there was one game that dominated the consciousness. Street Fighter 2. Which actually brings me quite neatly to today's subject, actually. Crikey. Street Fighter 2, the movie. No, the animated movie. I'm gonna have problems with this one. Originally released in 1994, and localised by Manga Entertainment soon after, the animated movie focuses not on Guile, but on Ryu, a lone martial artist rumoured to be the world's greatest fighter, must battle his lifelong friend for the fate of the world. Featuring all your favourite characters, this is no game. So strap on your fist pads and put up your dukes. This is Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Our story begins with a mysterious character approaching an important politician. The girl we learn is Kami. She was brainwashed by Shadow Law, General Vega's terrorist group. And yes, I'll be referring to him as General Vega throughout this piece. Look, you all know about the Tyson Bison thing, so we'll just move on from here. We then cut to Patterson Air Force Base, where we meet Guile. Stop it! No, this is our Guile. And when Interpol agent Chun Li turns up to discuss a joint operation, Guile is quite unwilling to share. And then we are introduced to him, General Vega. His scientists have created the Monitor Cyborg to better scout for potential brainwashing victims. And at last, we meet our protagonist, Ryu. Ryu and his counterpart, Ken Masters, studied Ansatsu Shotokan Karate at the feet of their master Go Ken, but after leaving the dojo, they went their separate ways. In China, Ryu is dragged into a fight. Ouch! That's how to end a fight quickly! This is where we meet Fei Long, who tells our nominal protagonist all about Shadow Law, and then Ryu just wanders off. Such is the way of the lone wolf. Or maybe he's just an antisocial was name. I don't know. And then we meet Ken Masters, All-American Karate Champion. Then Ryu makes his way down to India. This sequence has some nice character moments, and introduces us to Ed Honda, whose mountain retreat will stage the finale of this movie. On board Vega's jet, we learn that Ken's fight with Hawk was monitored. Chun Li confronts Guile. She's got her own grudge against Vega, as he killed her father, but she's an Interpol agent first and foremost, and her conviction brings Guile on side. But oh dear, she's blindsided by Barlog. Or Balrog if you prefer. But not Vega. Never Vega. Definitely not Vega. No way, no how. Long story short, she sends the scurrilous Spaniard packing, but not without taking damage, and being sidelined for the rest of the movie. Don't worry though, she wakes up good as new in the denouement. And to make matters worse, Vega has caught up with Ken. Ken puts up a brave fight but it's no match for Vega's psychopower. Vega personally oversees the reconditioning of Ken, twisting him into an evil minion. And so the stage is set for our climax, as Guile catches up with Ryu, who's enjoying the hospitality of Ed Honda in the Laosian Mountains. The players take their positions and battle commences. But Ken begins to resist the reconditioning, which provokes Vega's ire. And while Ryu battles Vega solo, Ken staggers slowly to his feet and back to sanity. And with a flourish, Ken re-enters the fray. Vega lowers himself to human level, and Ryu and Ken clean house. And so our movie ends with Ryu disappearing into the distance. So that was Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. 
And I just have to put this one into the House of Love. This movie is seriously padded. Most of the incidental fights are purely to show off the characters from the game, and what plot there is doesn't take a lot of explaining. Everyone's looking for Ryu to stop the General from creating an unstoppable crime syndicate and being the secret puppet master of the world. With a dash of rivalry between Ryu and Ken, and much as the English dub ends up changing lines again and heavily objectifying Chun Li, it's still a joy to watch. Not least for the animation itself which is a great extrapolation from the pixelated portraits of the game. Sure, the plot's paper thin, but the characters are well observed, the motives are realistic, and the animated Vega is even hammier than Raul Julia's bison. In summary then, this isn't a cerebral exploration into the nature of fighting. It's a brain-off, balls-to-the-wall, chop-socky 90s anime tie-in to the arcade sensation that is Street Fighter 2. So go ahead, check it out. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for... Oh snap! They found me! Well, you're not taking me without a fight!